So in previous lectures, we've talked about how there is the cell cycle that consists of the G phase, the S phase, and the G2 phase, which the three combined is called interphase. And then there are the, the M phases, so this could be either mitosis or meiosis. But what we haven't um, talked about is that at the end of each of these phases, there are essentially these molecular stoplights, which consist of genes that tell the cell to stop dividing or to continue on the process. And so you can suspend essentially the cell from going from the G1 to the S phase by turning on a red light, or you could speed up that process by turning on a green light really brightly. And when cells begin to divide excessively, this is what we call cancer. And you know, this can begin as a tumor, eventually invade other tissues, and then eventually even start to spread throughout the body through the process of metastasis. So the way that this happens, if you can imagine back to the stoplight, this proto-oncogene is analogous to the green light on the stoplight. And when it is working as it should, it produces one of these purple normal growth stimulating proteins. However, if a mutation occurs on this gene, then you can get the condition where the gene all of a sudden becomes hyperactive. And so now you have a different type of protein that functions in a different way, causing the cell to go into cell division more rapidly than it should. Likewise, you could have a mutation that does an entire gene duplication event, like maybe the entire gene gets, multi gets copied multiple times. So therefore, each one of these copies goes through the process of transcription and then translation, and you get excess growth-stimulating protein, so three of the purple spheres here instead of just one. Uh, another potential model is that perhaps you have a mutation on the promoter region of the gene. And remember, the promoter region is the region that turns the gene on or turns the gene off. And if you have a mutation here, one possible outcome could be that the gene gets turned on again. And so the, the final result is excess growth stimulating protein. So that's, the, that's one type of gene that we call a cancer um, a possible cancer-causing gene, or a proto-oncogene. Proto means before, and oncogene refers to the cancer. But another possible way that this can happen is by changing the so-called stoplight genes, or the tumor suppressor genes. And tumor suppressor gene, here is the normal condition where you have the gene, it produces a protein, and that protein turns on the red light and says, stop, do not go too fast into cell division. Well, you could have a mutation on this gene, for example, maybe a one uh, nucleotide insertion that causes a frame shift. And so now you have a very different protein that's being produced. It's defective. It's non-functional. And so therefore, there is no red stoplight, and the gene divides out of control. So those are the two different ways that cancer can, um, are ge the general models for, models for how cancer can come about either through the, these two types of genes. And as cancer develops then, as you continually aggregate these mutations, either proto-oncogene um, mutations or tumor suppressor gene mutations, then you continually add more and more mutations and you basically walk, you, walk the cell or the organism through the stages of um, cancer. So you, you, if you have no mutations, you have a normal cell, and if you have lots of mutations, then you end up being a malignant cell. And this corresponds essentially to what you know doctors see when they take a biopsy of the tissue. They see uh, very little extra growth or lots of extra growth and even growth that's starting to invade adjacent tissue. So many people ask, well, is cancer inherited? Cancer is always a genetic disease because it's based on the DNA, but it's usually occurring in the somatic cells, so not the germline cells, not the eggs and sperm. But when it does occur in the germline cells, in the gametes, then it can become familiar. And when it is familiar, then the mutations in one or more genes can predispose the offspring to having cancer. And this is when a cancer is considered familiar or inherited. So a good example of this is like breast cancer, right? Um, this in, in some families, uh, you know, a grandma had breast cancer, the mom, an aunt, and maybe a daughter wants to find out, do I have breast cancer? Well, you can actually go in now and look at the genes that we know that are 
involved in breast cancer, like BRCA1 and BRCA2, and you can test for these mutations. And if you see the mutations, then you know that that person, that, that, that female, is already along the pathway, in, in a sense, to getting cancer. And so therefore, it is, it is familial in that sense. So the way we treat cancer is more uh, well known. We can do surgery, radiation therapy, chemotherapy, and there's lots of new treatments coming out every day. Um, and that's why cancer research is really one of the big areas of research in, in um, biological health sciences. So to prevent cancer, there are some obvious things to do. You want to reduce the amount of mutations that are happening in tissues. So things that are mutagen mutagenic, like smoking or excess exposure to the sun or you know too much fiber in your diet low fat diet though these type or uh, having a low fiber high fat diet these types of things are the are the types of things that you would want to do to prevent cancer or at least to prevent the no more mutations happening than would than should be happening and then there are lots of self examinations that can be done and there's you know some easy types that we could go over skin oral breast prostate cervical testicular colon cancer or colon um, uh, colonoscopies as well and you should see a doctor again about these things for the most part the general rule is you know above 30 if it's if you think that in your family some of these um, cancers exist or you know for sure by about 40 you ought to be t doing most of these exams 